Hi, um, this is Jen Reynolds. Thank you for coming on to the channel and for watching my videos. This one is number three in my set of top 10 how to be successful in your online course. And this one is part two of the top 10 in how to get started in your online course. Number one, use the technology to thoroughly enter and scroll through every week's materials entirely from the top to the bottom. This is something that I see many of my students miss. They may check one or two things here and there, but they miss a lot of information and they miss assignments that way. They miss deadlines. So make sure if you have an asynchronous course and if it is set up in weekly modules or segments that you are clicking that on, you're reading from top to bottom through everything and click on any of those blue links so that you can get led to further instructions. It'll show you the date and time that things open and close. And so you can see what is expected of you for that week. Number two, celebrate your small accomplishments. We all celebrate big accomplishments such as graduation, but going to school is hard and you're balancing a lot of things. It's, it's time consuming. You don't get a lot of sleep. It can be stressful. Make sure that you celebrate those small accomplishments. You submitted and completed a lab. You, you submitted and completed your weekly quizzes. You made a 100 on an assignment. You completed a week. You've completed the halfway mark in your course. And finally, when you complete your course, celebrate those accomplishments because you did it. It is tough, you overcame a lot of obstacles and it's important and you matter. Um, even though your instructor may not get to see you or interact with you, we do care and we will celebrate your accomplishments with you. When we're looking and we're seeing that you submitted things, you did something on time, you made a great grade. We do celebrate that and we're happy for you and we want you to be proud of the work that you have done. And we are proud of you. Um, so celebrate those accomplishments. Number three, reach out to IT or to your learning management system department to help you if you get stuck or if you need something. That is what they're there for. They are supporting you. They support us as instructors. A lot of times they are loading our materials for us. They help us with our quizzes and tests. They are running everything in the background. So you may not get to interact with them much personally, but they are playing the key role in why we are able to offer online courses in the first place. So it is that combination of the IT, which is the computer department and your learning management system, which we may, may be like a Moodle department or canvas department or blackboard or d2l there's groups of people specifically trained and they're the expert in computer issues and in learning management issues and they can help you specifically a lot of times they will want to know what computer you're using what browser you're using if you've cleared your cache or history if something's glitching so make sure that you find out the phone number, the contact information, and reach out if you need help. Number four, reach out for tutoring online if your school offers online tutoring. Most tutoring through your school tends to be free and take advantage of that if you need it because that's what they're there for. They're there to help give you extra support and to help you in a subject matter whether it's math or biology or chemistry or psychology or English, your tutors are there to help you. And if you have any questions, that's what they're there for. Ours has an online link that you can click to schedule online tutoring. And I find that very beneficial, especially for the online student who may not be local to my school where I teach. Number five, reach out for counseling if you are struggling with your mental health. It can cause anxiety when you're new to the online setting 
And if you're balancing a lot of different courses at one time, or if you're using a new learning management system and you just feel overwhelmed, then a lot of times the school that offers your course also offers a school counselor for free. Ours has an in-person counselor um, on multiple campuses, plus we have a virtual counselor called TESS, and that is online for no cost to the students. So this can be very beneficial, even if you just need somebody to talk through things with and to help you feel calmer when you're adjusting to this, please take advantage of that because they want to help you and that's what they're there for too. Number six, always, always, always frequently check your emails and read them. This is a course expectation and I know sometimes it, it um, is unsaid, but make sure that you are checking your school email that your class is associated with and that you're frequently checking your announcements. Typically, the announcements are linked to your school email and they will go to that too. So I recommend checking these at least two or three times a week so you don't miss out on important information. It could be events that the school is having. It could be just deadlines that are coming up and your instructor wants to remind you. I do that for my classes. If there's a Kahoot study for something, I send them the link. If I find a cool article, I'll send an announcement with a link. And um, if I find something new and updated in the news in the field that I'm teaching, I will send out a link. So make sure you're checking that frequently. Number seven, always respond to emails by your instructor. Your instructor is concerned about you. They care about you. We worry about you, especially if they reach out because you haven't participated in a week or two. I know for myself, I worry that maybe something happened or are they struggling? And I like to hear back so I know everything's okay. I can help you answer any questions or clarify something that you may have and make sure that you um, aren't confused about something in any way. So reach back out to your instructor. You don't have to be nervous or scared. That's what we are here for is to help you be successful in your course. Number eight, please do not miss out on your big grade assignments. Um, your grading scale will be in your syllabus. So again, um, pick out your syllabus, take it out. You can see the grading scale and you can see how much weight is put on your different categories. So if it's a weighted grade class out of 100%, quizzes and exams may be 40 or 50% of that chunk, so those are big ticket items. Papers and projects tend to be a big chunk, um, 30 or 40%. Labs may be 20 or 30%. Attendance may even count towards your grade that may count 10 or 20%. So you need to look at those and find out what is expected. And if you have to skip one thing out of the five, do the most important ones that are worth the highest grade and highest chunk of your grade. Make sure you do not miss those. Don't miss exams and quizzes and big projects and things like that. Number nine, take good notes. Even though you're on an online course, if there is a lecture that's posted, it's good for you to take notes if you are a hands-on person because it may help that stick more in your brain. As, um, some people writing, it's reinforced in the brain, the whole motion of writing. Use highlighters if you're a visual person. Um, also, if you're a visual person, the PowerPoints are there for you. If you're an auditory person, lectures are good for you. If there's some voiceover PowerPoints that are posted from time to time, those are good. Podcasts and then hands-on, the hands-on labs will be very good for you as well. If you're auditory, you can read your materials out loud and that will also help reinforce the information for you. So figure out your learning style, how you learn best. 
figure out if you need silence to study. Some people need it perfectly quiet. Other people can't work in quiet. They need background noise, which is called white noise. It could be a fan on in the background or the radio needs to be on, or maybe you need to have some static on or the TV on in the background. Everybody is different. Some people have to chew gum. Some people need to tap on something. Some people remember things better if they are going for a walk or playing basketball or something. So figure out what works best for you and incorporate that into your studying and your learning sessions. Finally, number 10, balance your work and school. Um, effort, making any type of effort and setting aside time and time management is key for success in your online course. And that's all I have for this session. I hope this was very helpful for you. Please let me know and please feel free to watch my other videos.